This is Humanianity Conversation number 22, recorded on May 1st, 2019. It is the eighth recorded conversation with my friend Steve Rast. We continued our discussion from our last session, which was interrupted suddenly by a connection failure. So we continued our discussion on the nature of reality and its relationship to consciousness, the latter being an example of a supernatural entity. I clarified the concept of reality presented in the book on the mind-body problem, available free on the Humanianity.com website under Philosophy, along with the related concepts of the subjective model and the objective model, models of reality. Reality being a hypothetical construct, the only evidence for which is the ability to predict. In order to consolidate and expand these concepts, I do recommend reading the Mind-Body Problem book, but this conversation should make it possible to get a fairly clear initial understanding. Hey, I don't see you yet. I, I don't. Yeah, it's coming up. Uh -huh. don't, don't see, see you either. either. Uh -huh. The Ethernet cable has not come yet, so we're on wireless, but uh, it should be here shortly, I guess. The mail usually comes around 3-ish. Uh -huh. Here it comes there up. There we go. I see you now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, well, I kind of regard this as part two of our okay. previous discussion because we were right in the middle of a, a very difficult set of issues and and then all of a sudden it went down and you'll have to remind my poor feeble brain where we were at <laughs> uh, yeah well I think I sort of remember but yeah well uh, we had been talking some about um, spirituality and we never really got into what spirituality oh, okay, yeah. means uh, we mentioned about Sam Harris maybe was, uh, you know, anti-religion, but considered himself to be spiritual uh, through his meditative practices and so forth. And um, uh, so what, uh, what I was um, trying to uh, do was present, I'd just gotten started, present uh, the... Um, the the begin uh, a little bit about what's in the mind body problem book that's uh, available, of course, on the website humanianity.com under philosophy. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, you have read that once and are in your second reading, as I that is correct. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, <clears throat> we were talking about. Um, it's also related to the concept, the issue of what is uh, the supernatural, or what what do we mean by supernatural? And um, um, so, I was uh, I was mentioning that that uh, we have the model that the that the natural sciences uh, give us of these particle wave like things that are going around in um, essentially empty space and so forth and it, it's not anything like what we have in our lives what we experience and then I was talking about and and, and this was related to consciousness in that consciousness consciousness is nowhere in any of the natural sciences and um, uh, in other words, uh, you, you've got uh, uh, you know matter and energy and uh, time and space, and 
then um, uh, ways of measuring those things and so forth. Uh, but nowhere in that, um, uh, in the natural science set of models, uh, including biology, neurology, uh, any of that, um, is there anything about consciousness? Um, yet, that's very important to us uh, in that, uh, and, and uh, the, in the in the book, I describe this as uh, under the subjective model, and it's our whole uh, way of experiencing uh, life. And uh, so, uh, you know, we know each other and everything. Um, you're looking a little bit sleepy again. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm here. <laughs> a little late night last night, but I'm okay. <laughs> In a board meeting this morning, but I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I, I know if I talk at some length, like I've said before. <laughs> You're a natural sleeping pill or something. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> No, I'm fine. I just had lunch and everything, so I think I'm alert. Yeah. Uh, well, having had lunch, that's another reason to be sleepy. So. Uh... <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> But at any rate, uh, going on... Uh, light, light lunch. Uh -huh, okay, well, that's good. So, um, so uh, what is really important to us is what uh, this subjective model is, and it's everything that we can experience, everything that we know. It's moment-by-moment -moment experience. It's what we live in. It's like a movie that we're in or a play that we're in or something... And it's, uh, it, we don't see any boundary to it. Um, uh, we just, uh, uh, um, we look around and we see things and we see each other. And when we look at each other, we have a feeling like, well, there's something there. And we usually call that the spirit of the person, if we're going to uh, use that kind of terminology. And it's that you know, that when the person suddenly dies, then uh, we feel that that has left the body uh, and either doesn't exist anymore or is in a different place or a different world or something like that um, yeah. uh, and so on. And that's nothing like uh, the scientific model um, except that when we... Uh, when we construct the scientific model, the objective model, we can only use the material from our uh, subjective model. So we imagine particles like grains of sand and so on, but none of that is actually, it turns out actually to be a good model of what is, uh, uh, what's in reality. There you go. <laughs> no, I'm here. <laughs> So, uh, so at any rate, that's just kind of to bring you up to date, and uh, okay, yeah. If you get a chance I, to, I remember that now. Yep. <laughs> well, um, yeah, these are difficult uh, topics, I guess. Um, spirit and um, consciousness, awareness, um, but um, we. We have experience. Um, it's always experience of something. Um, and almost, well, I would say everything that, that happens um, is um, inexperience. We can't get beyond our experience to project um, physical objects I guess although we we do that I guess but it's it's still in our consciousness I think but, you know, what or our or our awareness maybe that's a better word than consciousness awareness well uh, I would say those are the same thing or well consciousness of something would be the same as awareness Awareness, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. But when you use the word project, uh, it was uh, you're trying to convey something, 
excuse me, but um, yeah, well, when I say project, it is um, it is mental. Um, what's a good word? Not mental objects. Um, it is the mental that we, you know, that we um, um, that we experience, and we don't know and can't really can't say too much about what is outside of our awareness because if um, we're not here to have the awareness of um, object A and no one is available to have the experience of object A what then is object A? Now most people would say well it's object A let's say that it's a baseball for instance so the baseball is there regardless of whether so well the, say the baseball's on the table well the baseball's on the table regardless of whether anyone has an awareness of the baseball being on the table um, but I would say that if no one is there to observe measure all those different ways that we try to um, capture you know the, the, re, the reality of the external world I guess um, what we call the external world um, that um, we um, so that's what I mean I guess by projection um, we um, project um, in fact, you use you use the uh, metaphor of a movie. <laughs> well, a movie is projected, isn't it? But um, um, but yeah, we. Um, well, are... I'm getting I'm getting lost, by the way. Okay. Uh, uh, let me go back again. We we have object A. Okay, I have an awareness of object A. Let's say it's a baseball on the table. Um, is the table and the baseball as we are having awareness of it, okay, as we experience it when we have awareness of it. If no one is there um, observing or measuring the ball on the table, is the ball on the table really there? Is okay. That, and yeah. so let's let's tie this down here. Um, uh, what we're uh, what we're starting to uh, make use of is the concept of quote reality. You said <laughs> really there. In other yeah. words, uh, we would maybe use language like uh, is the ball and the table uh, actually in reality. And, and uh, we haven't defined reality yet. No. Um, now, I think it is very helpful to use the metaphor uh, uh, in, that uh, uh, is used in the book. Uh, let's take the baseball and, uh, and we, let's, let's construct a cartoon. And in the cartoon, we, say, we see uh, two people sitting uh, apart from each other, of course, looking at the ball on the table. And over the head of each of those two individuals is a balloon that we use in cartoons uh, to uh, describe either speech or thought or imagination. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, we'll uh, uh, make it imagination. Uh, and so in each of those two balloons, there is a ball and table, but it looks different, right? Yeah. Because of difference in perspective. Spect perspective, yeah. Okay. So we now have in the cartoon uh, three, let's say, three balls. Uh uh, one is sitting there on the table and the other is sitting on tables um, in one of the a person's balloons and 
another is in another person's balloon. So there are three. And um, now, what can we say about uh, the um, the balloons, uh, like what's in the balloons, relative to uh, what they are looking at? And what we say within our objective model is that the way that those individuals see the, the ball is because light bounces off the ball and travels through space. Uh, you're kind of going off again. No, I'm here. <laughs> I know this is difficult. Uh, well, I, what, yeah. Wait, well, I wait, think... wait, wait. Let, uh, let me, let me uh, finish okay. this, okay. this point and then, and then okay. uh, it's light bounces off the ball. Well, that's a change. That's no longer the ball. That's light waves. And those light waves go into the eyes of those two individuals. So, and they then stimulate the retina um, and uh, now become nerve impulses. Well, the nerve impulses are different from the light waves. So that's another change. And they go somewhere into the cortex and then uh, uh, all of a sudden, you know, there is the awareness uh, the the uh, uh, there there is in the mind of each of those two people the ball on the table, but it's totally different from the ball in the table. It's been changed uh, over and over, and um, uh, so uh, now wake up. I'm awake. Well, the um... so do you yeah, but, do you but, say but, the main but, the, the main uh, thing the the what we can say about that is the ball on the table is never something that we can have in consciousness. We can have only a model of it. That model uh, is not the ball. Correct. So what we say is the ball is what is, quote, in reality. But our perception of the ball is in our, quote, minds. And so that's so the important thing is we don't have any access to reality itself. We only have models of it. Yeah, uh, I think if you're going to lean on purely in empiricism as a way of knowing, okay, which seems to be the way the scientific model comes at things. In other words, if we can't see it, hear it, touch it, smell it, you know, then it's not, no, it's not real. It's some kind of fantasy or something, I guess. Um, no, 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 that, that's no. Something, uh, that, that doesn't sound right. Uh, <clears throat> within the objective model or scientific model, there's all sorts of stuff that we can't see that we have no conscious awareness of, but is, but, but uh, is uh, is considered to exist, right? Well, radical empiricism says no. You have to add something to empiricism to to get beyond that, because you know, the the empirical model is we must uh, perceive, and if we don't have perception or awareness of whatever it is we're talking about, then it doesn't exist. It's okay. a fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Now, then, uh, now, now, rationalism... Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. Yeah. There, there's a problem here. Uh, I'm not feeling real confident in what you've said. In empiricism, as you are describing it, mm -hmm. let's say you're driving, around, driving down a road and the road curves... Okay, now, in empiricism, uh, uh, well, w when when the road curves, you can't see what's around the uh, around the curve. That's uh, right. So, does empiricism say it doesn't exist until you can see it? Yes, you have to add something else to it. You have to add something to the effect of when I have driven down this road before, for instance. Um, I have um, driven around this curve, and there's a house on the other side. 
But KB the Fabio. empirical model can't say anything about that until you actually get around the curve. And see it. Yeah. It's only yeah. while you're seeing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm not familiar with any empirical, uh, any empiricism that, that states that, but I, I'm not uh, adequately knowledgeable. But I well that yeah that's the empirical model as it was presented, and this is primarily in this in, yeah the the empiricists primarily come out of England the British empiricists, um, and um, this is the critique of empiricists, including Hume, and including Berkeley, um, is that um, you know um, they're there seems to be something in our awareness beyond just that which we can perceive. Um, radical empiricism leads, leaves very little there for um, uh, mental objects and that sort of thing, for, uh, for ideas. Um, um, that would be more in the, um, the the kind of the rationalist model, which primarily comes um, on the continent, primarily French. Okay, but, well, I'm I'm getting a little bit lost, and I'm sure that uh, people listening to us yeah. are maybe a little bit lost at this point. Uh, in other words, we are mentioning various isms and various people and so forth, mm -hmm. but the the but the actual thing that you and I are talking about, uh, are we in agreement that um, that uh, that we believe that there is something around the corner, and if one has seen it in the past, that it's very likely similar to what we've seen in the past when we've driven around uh, the corner? It's, yes, but that moves you beyond empiricism. Okay, well, so yeah. we don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. Uh, to, to, uh, I'm skeptical that, that all empiricism says that the only thing that exists is that which you are currently seeing or feeling or, or, uh, or whatever. Well, it, it's the way it was originally defined as um, it is a way of of um, of knowing, it's an epistemology empiricism. It's a way of it's a way of knowing. Um, but this sounds uh, an awful lot like instead like phenomenology, um, which uh, you know. It, well, that well, it grew into that. Yeah, Husserl and those folk, you know, back in the middle of the well, a little before the middle of the. 20th century, I guess, 1930s, 1920s. Yeah, okay. so, so the, uh, it's related to the idea of solipsism, right? And solipsism uh, says the only thing that exists is what you are experiencing right now. And if somebody leaves the room, they disappear, they no longer exist, uh, and so on, that, uh, that the only thing that exists is your experience at the moment. That's that's my understanding. Yes, yes, because um, it is basically empiricism is basically based on on that uh, information which our sense organs um, give us. Now, nobody is a radical empiricist. Uh, okay, so we can know, leave uh, that maybe he, well, Hume Hume showed, I think, David Hume showed that um, to take that stance of um, you know radical empiricism leads to kind of a dead end. Um, um, so, we, the, we can, uh -huh. we, so we can kind of abandon that, right? In other words, uh, the idea that the only thing that exists is what you are seeing at the moment or hearing at the moment. Uh, that, that, um, and you can extend that to instruments that we observe. You know, so it may be that you know, I can't, um, you know, you know, measure the, um, uh, you know, voltage in a, I mean, I can't, I can't through my direct senses um, um, perceive 
voltage in a wire, but I can use a volt ohm meter and, and measure the voltage and all that kind of thing. But we're still dealing with some kind of uh, observation, I guess. Yeah. Okay, well, then, then <clears throat> um, it sounds to me like empiricism, uh, at least of the sort that, that uh, you and I are usually understanding, uh, is that um, whatever we say exists has to be based upon our observations of something. But in other words, your observations of the, uh, the pointer of the dial uh, of the voltometer um, allow you to uh, consider that voltage exists, that electricity exists, and so on. But we never see the electricity. Exactly. Okay, okay, so... Uh, but, but that measurement is also an observation because we're observing the, the instrument. Um, and it, some will say, well, no, let's say that the, the, uh, the voltage is um, not, um, you know, coming up on a meter, but it's going in a computer. <laughs> you know, so the, uh, the you know, the, it, it's, um, you know, going to be registered there or something. Well, you're still talking about some kind of awareness if you're going to know what's registered there, I guess, you know. Well, um, yeah, but, but in other words, uh, empiricism uh, means that uh, it has to be ultimate, that whatever your conclusions are about what's in reality, it has to be based on something you can observe. Yes. So, uh, um, so that's, that's a little different than solipsism. Uh, in solipsism... Uh, that it it's what you are observing right now is the only reality that you uh, that you have that 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 is reality. There's only there's only you uh, meaning everything that you're experiencing currently. So um, are you still there? I'm here. Yes. Uh huh. Because uh, your image is frozen and. The oh, last okay. time that happened, uh, Skype gave up on us. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so I'm trying to make a, a, a point here, something that we can kind of agree upon uh, as far as the terminology that we are using for this discussion. And, and so that's why I don't, uh, I, I think we can run into problems if we start talking about this ism and that ism and assume that everybody knows what we're talking about and so yeah. on. Um, and uh, so, so, uh, uh, so again, the, the basic issue that, to go back to the basic issue that I'm talking about, uh, like the cartoon, uh, uh, what is, quote, in the mind of each of those individuals has to be different than what presumably caused it to be. In other words, the ball on the table that would be there whether they were looking at it or not is not the same thing as their each of them, their perception of the ball. The perception of the ball is a model of the ball. And if it's an accurate model, then uh, action taken on the basis of it will turn out not to be a mistake. So uh, if the person reaches for the ball, uh, they'll be able to pick it up, and etc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, uh, so that immediately uh, makes reality different than quote our perception of it our perception of reality or our beliefs about reality are not reality. They are models of reality. And the only way of telling whether they are correct models is whether they lead to a uh, prediction that turns out to be correct. Now, that uh, that's an assertion uh, that I think probably takes uh, a fair amount of thought 
to evaluate. Uh, yeah. you know, well, surely there are exceptions or something, but I don't think there are. Um, and uh, so, so the um, the uh, so what is in the balloon of each of those individuals? Uh, everything that's in the balloon, not just the ball and the table, but everything, that is their, each of them, that's their subjective model. And we make the assumption, you're making the assumption that there's this guy, Bill, who's watching you. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> well, yeah, the, there he is, but... Um, um, you're ma you're making an assumption. And the, that they're, they're, the predictive model that you're talking about is certainly in the uh, um, kind of in the modern scientific uh, because that's the whole thing that you can um, um, you can have a particular observation, you can set up a particular um, experiment, and you can um, um, repeat that experiment such that you can if you do certain methods you can predict that you will get you know certain outcomes and, yes. if, um, and if you do that over a extended um, period of time you almost begin to say well this is no longer a theory this is more like a scientific um, law and so you're basically um, getting into um, almost what I would call uh, foundationalism again. Yeah, but that's, that's going, that's actually leaving the area that we were talking about. Um, and there you're not using deductive logic, there you're using inductive logic. Well, I understand, but that's, yeah. further, that's further down the road, so to speak. If we back up, Let's say that you see a ball in front of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you're seeing is a model of what's in reality. Now, if you reach out and pick up the ball, but instead your hand goes through it and you can't pick it up, then you would say that that, that, uh, that model that you have of a ball there on the table in front of you is uh, is an inaccurate model. It's an hallucination. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, the the thing that that allows you to say that there really is a ball is your ability to predict that if you do certain things, like if you reach over and grab it, that you that indeed you will find it in your hand, and so forth and so on, and. Um, uh, to say that, the, yeah, the, sure, that things exist around the corner, when I turn the corner, uh, that's a prediction. Uh, uh, in other words, the, the uh, accuracy of it uh, will be determined when you turn around the corner and you see, yes, indeed, it is as I had imagined. So my imagination of what's around the corner is an accurate model of reality, but it's not reality. Because everything in the mind is just uh, is different than the the uh, the object that is not in the mind, but that one is looking at and perceiving. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make sense? It's hard to get that idea across. It is. Um... Yeah, from the from the way you're defining your terms and using those terms, I would say yeah that most people would probably um, agree with that. I think. Um, but, but is the is the way that I am using the terms uh, in any way different than the way we always use those terms? Well, I. I think we make projections. Okay, uh, uh, we we have these. What is a projection? We, we, well, we have these. What well, we have this awareness, and um, um, and it's typically an awareness of something. It seems when we're having the awareness that it is um, something outside of myself 
that um, you know that I'm observing or seeing or you know whatever. Um, okay, so you're dividing up the subjective model. I agree into what it, what you call self and what you call not self. Yeah. Yeah. That's all within your subjective model. But again, it is a model of reality. Like, um, uh, wake up, wake up. I'm awake. Yeah, well, you, do you know that, that your uh, eyes close and your head drifts downward? No, but yeah, well, that's so, what's I don't know. Yeah. But I'm listening, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, yeah, but the, um, when I think about it, you know, when you, when you don't think, like, like Hume said, yeah, you know, you leave the study and go play billiards, you know, or whatever, and you, you basically, um, live in a world of what, you know, seems to be objects external to you, um, and those kind of things. But when you reflect on it, um, again, taking that empirical viewpoint or that empirical worldview, um, it, uh, you know, the idea of a world external to our, um, awareness, um, you know, um, postulating, I guess, cause you would have to, it would have to be some foundation or something, you know, that you're postulating, um, and so if you're saying, well, there's a world external to my awareness, and even if all the awarenesses in the world were taken out of the world, the objects that we're having awareness of, you know, would would still be there in some way. Um, now, I... Ha, yeah, that, I, has all kinds of um, I got philosophical lost. problems. I got lost there. Uh, uh, again... Um, there's something very, uh, very basic here um, that that I'm trying to get across, and it does not yet feel like I'm getting it across. And uh, but I may be. Uh, it's hard to tell. The um, what I'm talking about is you, right now. Uh, I assume exist. <laughs> And, uh, and you are seeing all sorts of things around you. You're seeing the screen in front of you. You're seeing this guy, Bill, talking to you and so forth. All of that is, uh, wake up, wake up. I'm awake, I'm awake. Uh, all, uh. all of that is, quote, in your mind. It is a model of what you are saying must therefore exist in reality. But all you have is what's in your mind. That is correct, yes. Yeah, okay. And so uh, we do make a, an assumption that there is reality. There's, there's one bit of evidence for it, uh, and only one bit of evidence, I say, and that's the ability to predict, but we can get back right. to that. But, uh, but it is, um, uh, it, uh, th well, let me just add one other thing here, and uh, you're, you're drifting again a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, you're, um, and, and by the way, I keep thinking uh, you might want to check out obstructive sleep apnea uh, because uh, something like that can cause excessive daytime sleepiness mm -hmm. and if that is a problem if you have to keep talking in order to be awake mm -hmm. uh, then um, uh, that means some kind of sleep deprivation or something so you might want to check that out um, just saying but at any rate um, uh, the um, uh, if, if we uh, what happens we come into the world like the infant just is experiencing everything makes a dis distinction between self and this other thing called mother and these other things called inanimate objects not yet called anything by the infant right but but um, 
uh, you know, and mother comes and goes and comes and goes. There's a certain amount of predictability about certain things. Like when I have a certain mental state, my arm moves. That's the intention to move my arm. So all, all of that becomes a, a, a part of this world that I'm in. Uh, and then, uh, and then I learned that some things, every time I look in a particular direction, I see such and such. So when I look away from it and I'm no longer seeing it, it must continue to be there. And so we imagine that, okay, well, it's still there. And I just turn around and look at it. Uh, it doesn't disappear because I cease to look at it. Um, but, uh, so this concept of reality uh, this predictability of what one will find if one does something um, is, again, an important part of, um, uh, of this initial subjective model. But then we begin to be told by other people, no, what you have in mind is not right. There you go. Wake up. Wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that is certain. I mean, what you're saying is certainly true. I mean, that that's the way we live our lives, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but when you reflect on it, um, you know, in a deep sort of way, it's it's kind of problematic um, that you know, um, and non-locality in physics and stuff is making it even more. Um, problematic although there I agree you're just basically you're dealing with um, um, with with experimentation with mathematical models uh, that can have you know differing interpretations um, yes. uh, yeah um, mathematical models are the uh, what uh, are the values that we get in the process of measuring, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, but but that's jumping a little bit ahead. Uh, I, I was about to talk about uh, the objective model, and I'm trying to uh, talk about what is gone into in great detail in the book on the mind-body problem. Um, the um, uh, um, the it is not long before, after we start putting our beliefs into our words, uh, people begin to say, well, that's not right. And they tell us something different. Wake up. Wake up. Um, yeah, you, um, you, you do that. Um, I, um, so let, let, let me add something in. Let, let yeah. me add something in. People will tell you something. Uh, they'll tell you what's happening to so-and-so mm -hmm. who is uh, many miles away. Or they mm -hmm. will tell you about people you've never met. So they begin to produce in your mind, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, this set of images mm -hmm. uh, that are produced when the person tells you those things. And this model grows and grows, especially with, uh, with uh, our uh, educational process, where we learn things about the historical past and we learn things about, uh, well, about atoms and molecules and space and time and stuff like that, which ultimately, when you take a look at those, uh, uh, those uh, objects that they're talking about, are not anything like the objects that we hold in our hands. Uh, uh, these uh, wave particle entities that uh, are, uh, I, I cannot explain to you because I'm not that uh, uh, knowledgeable about quantum mechanics and all of that. All of that is a set of like visual models using your experience to help you to model the mathematical equations that are produced by the, uh, the uh, mathematical uh, manipulation of measurements, measurement values, measurement values. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
So that is where the scientific model comes in. And um, so again, that's just a model of what is in reality. And um, so uh, as a final kind of thing to put it all together, it's like we are in the audience, there's a stage of the curtain, and behind it is reality. And uh, what we, all we can do is we can say, well, is it like this? Is it like that? Mm -hmm. And what we get back is, well, that's pretty good. It's like that. But not what it is. It's only what in our imagination is sort of like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think, think if we... we it, uh, if we could just get to that point of seeing that we're dealing with uh, with, with with models that we're not um, experiencing directly some external world, I guess. Uh, right. And yeah, um, and some scientists would agree with that, and some scientists would maybe not agree with that, but. Um, um, but if you if you make that a foundation, um, that foundation. What do you mean? Well, that um, you know, this is what reality is. Um, but even but there, you're having to start with something that you can't prove through means of empiricism or anything like that. It's just you know, it's just again kind of a postulate, like and but if you can take that, you know, that um, a postulate, and then um, um, you know um, work with it, you know, construct a world, I guess. Um, what postulate that is consistent with the. Um, with with the postulate, well, well, I mean, that's, that's what, what you have to do. What is in any in any in any kind of knowing that you do, you have to start with kind of a basic world view, yeah, but which what, you can't use either rationalism or empiricism. But well, have. see, now we're getting into isms. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean what well, postulate are you talking? Well, about? if you want to say that reality is is that which. Uh, you know, we, we perceive, and um, if we don't perceive it, it's, it's not a part of um, reality. The tabula rasa of, uh, of um, Locke, for instance. Yeah, I okay, mean, but, yeah. but neither yeah. you nor I think that that's correct. Am I right? That is correct. Yeah, yes. yeah okay, so we can leave out Locke and, and, and that sort of uh, thing for the moment. If, if we're trying... If we're trying to get at a basic understanding and the people who are uh, watching and so forth are trying to understand what we're talking about, uh, then uh, the question is, is this idea of reality that which the only uh, evidence we have of is our ability to predict what will happen in our models, in our subjective model? Um, uh, of the world. In other words, what the dial is going to show on the voltometer uh, or what the measurements will show in the, in the uh, uh, particle accelerator or whatever it is. Um, uh, and, uh, but it doesn't have to be that abstruse like in, into advanced uh, physics. It can be anything uh it's like um uh uh if you um every time you take a step you're predicting that you're not going your foot is not going to go through the floor that is a a belief manifesting itself uh in the taking of that action when you take a step forward uh that uh it is based upon the prediction that your foot will land a particular way and you'll continue to go forward um, and not go through, uh, wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> it's, it's when, it's when uh, your head begins to nod, you know, and, yeah. and you're not aware of it. Well, 
the I, I my thinking all and all this is what folks should do. Um, okay. Everybody has a worldview, I guess. Um, it is try it is to try to make that um, worldview as consistent as possible. Um, and so, you know, to me, worldviews need a little bit of reflection. Um, so if this is my worldview, whatever, um, what, what follows from that, I guess. And there you would be using to some degree, um, in, I mean, deductive logic, yeah, rather than inductive logic. Well, okay, let's, uh, deductive logic has to do with putting sentences in a, uh, in a particular order and using the rules of logic to see whether, yeah. like, whether the third sentence uh, is uh, contradictory to the first two sentences. If yes. A is true and, and B is true, then C has to be true or something like that. So, yeah, that's kind of basic Aristotelian logic. We've kind of gotten beyond that now with various and sundry forms of symbolic logic. But uh, like fuzzy but, logic. Like yeah, fuzzy, but, fuzzy but there, logic. yeah, there you're taking um, um, sentences uh, and um, um, looking at the. Um, internal consistency of a variety of different, um, you know, sentences that you might be um, saying is, um, um, you know, this is what reality is um, all about. But it's just very difficult to get at a kind of a concrete, objective um, uh, statement about reality because like you say we never experience reality we uh, what you're saying is we experience uh, models of reality yeah. but a model of reality is not reality itself I guess. Yeah. and so uh, our belief about reality is a model of reality our perception of reality is a model of reality the and uh, uh, so uh, then, in, in addition, see, we, d we can have beliefs that we don't put into words, like when you're walking along, your belief that your foot is not going to go through the floor, that's not put into words. And uh, so, uh, uh, so then we can put our beliefs into words, and they, then they are in sentences. I believe that. Uh, whatever it is, and so that that is a linguistic model of our model of reality. Gosh, there you go. We got. No. Uh, yeah, the. Um, I just think it's very difficult to get beyond what we're calling awareness. And it seems like you're kind of saying that in the sense that, you know, at best we're talking about um, some constructed um, um, model of what we then label the real, I guess. Uh, but um, it is still all in, you know, awareness. Um, yeah, reality we, we, is, yeah. Reality is a hypothetical construct. It is. It, yes. It is. It is something that we assume, and um, and the only reason we assume it, the only reason is because of predictability. If you were not able to predict anything at all, uh, then you would be in a whirling kind of uh, 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 midst of all sorts of experience and so forth and you'd say well this is just this is life this is it you know you wouldn't be talking about reality yeah um, 
words we were talking about this last night at the humanity meeting um words um just by their very nature and the way we use language and develop grammars and syntax and all that sets up these um um for lack of a better term um polarities um you know the uh, the natural, the supernatural, the um, the hot, the cold. The you know you name it, and we've got you know, language that'll give you kind of both sides of the um, of the picture, I guess. But we want to kind of say a lot of the times, well, the picture that I brought this morning, I brought into whatever that you know that's um, um, you know that that. You know, that's what is real. Um, but again, it is just, again, it's like the bottle on the table. It is just an awareness of, um, of um, things that um, seem to be co connected. I mean, we, we don't have isolated bits of awareness. Um, awareness seems to be with us pretty much in all our waking hours what we call uh, um, you know awareness and what the fellow or gal who's dreaming would um, label the next morning and kind of um, dream awareness which doesn't seem to hold the same um, you know status as um, waking does and yet again I would argue when you're in a dream uh, how do you go about proving that um, um, that that is not you know reality when you're in the dream itself I guess now some folks reported from the group last Thursday night that no they know when they're dreaming um, I, all I can say is I usually don't so um, you know, when I'm in a dream, it's um, it, it it's a world, and um, and when I'm awake, it's a world. And granted, the two worlds can be different in a way, but both of them include, in one way or another, some form of awareness. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that last Thursday meeting, uh, I was asked to uh, report to the group my experience regarding. Uh, a dream and uh, and so I described how uh, I was in my late teens and sitting in my room at the typewriter and all of a sudden I noticed there was an extra column of keys and I said whoa wait a minute uh, uh, that can't be so I must be dreaming now this is interesting uh, then I should be able to tell that I'm dreaming by things maybe not looking right other than this uh, one thing. So I looked around the room and everything looked perfectly okay. And I said, but I know I have to be dreaming. So now that's interesting. Now can I wake myself up? And so I said, well, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And I woke up in bed. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh uh, so, yes, what, what we have, our solipsistic world, the way everything seems, that is our subjective model, uh, as it's described in the book on the mind-body problem. And the objective model is this other model that grows off of that, and it is produced by what people tell us, where they convince us, no, no. Our idea, original idea was incorrect, that this is the way it really is. So then we use our imagination, the, in other words, the contents, uh, our memory fragments of our uh, um, uh, internal experience, our subjective model, to flesh out this different picture that is one that we've never seen uh, and... Uh, but say, well, that's what's really so. And so then that's the objective model, which, of course, can be correct or incorrect. 
Um, and then the ultimate of that is the, the scientific models that uh, uh, are based upon, uh, essentially based upon measurement and, yeah. uh, uh, and so forth. And so that gets all the way, you know, to advanced physics and everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so there's the subjective model, which is the way everything seems. And then there's the objective model, which is that which is more likely a model of reality. What, what, the way everything seems is just a model of reality. And the objective model is just a more accurate uh, model of reality. So we have the three things, the subjective model, the way everything seems, the objective model, what we learn, wake up, wake up. I'm awake. Uh, I'm awake. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the subjective model, uh, the way everything seems, the objective model, uh, which is what we have learned from others, uh, is more accurate of reality. And then the third thing is reality, which is, the, which is whatever is behind the curtain and we only know that there's something there because we, when we predict, we get an answer uh, if, if we check out the prediction, see? So I'm trying to, uh, uh, what I'm trying to do right now is to uh, do something that I, I've not really felt that I could do, and that is explain the mind-body problem um, conclusions uh, without a person laboriously going through the book. Nice. And, um, um, but I think a person has to go through it more than once and reread many of the paragraphs and everything. So, um, there you go. Wake up. So, uh, uh I don't know. Uh, I hope this is not a painful experience for you. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, and I hope it's okay. I, I admit I was up a little late last night, so that's probably part of it. And I was up early this morning because I had a board meeting to go to. So, uh, well, it, it has yeah. happened in the past, and that's why I'm uh, in my own mind. I've been thinking he probably has obstructive sleep apnea. Needs no, to... don't have that. They tested for that. Oh, did they? they? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think I think I think it's just. Um, Staying up a little Sleep too late over the last several weeks that I, uh, uh, but anyway, anyway yeah. that I, that I don't usually stay up quite as late, maybe, and then yeah, you know, um, and then getting up a little um, earlier than I might otherwise if I'd stayed up yeah. as yeah. late as I stayed up last night. But I had, did have this board meeting today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, working well, on the budget at Habitat to Humanity. There's a lot that's come out on the importance of uh, avoiding sleep deprivation. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, enough know that, that well. <laughs> um, so, um, okay. Uh, so then, um, well, I don't know. Maybe this is as maybe this is as far as we should try to go. Uh, in this, uh, okay, and then I can get my Truman nap, and I'll be all, I'll be all well again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, me, me, me. Because there is the of... concept of supernatural, uh, and just a brief comment about yeah. that. Um, people, when they talk about what is the supernatural, they give a list of items. Uh, you know, like gods and devils and and uh, sure. and. and uh, Phenomena, you know, like levitation and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what uh, what the word is supposed to mean, as I understand it, is that which is not recognized in the natural sciences, and the natural sciences are like physics, chemistry, biology, neurology, right. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And nowhere in the natural sciences is consciousness there are no variables in That's any right. of the equations having to do with consciousness or like feelings or uh intuition or uh uh or um, pride or or things like that so all right. of those are actually supernatural and uh the belief that there is somebody there inside 
in quotes, the other person that you're talking to. In other words, your belief that there is an entity, a spirit that you can feel in me um, uh, is a supernatural belief. It, it is uh, uh, the belief that it is so. Uh, you have the experience, but that's just something going on in your brain. And uh, your conclusion that there is an entity there that uh, is uh, looking at you and has consciousness like your consciousness and so on is a supernatural belief. And I think that uh, supernatural beliefs of that sort are essential uh, to our health. When we don't have uh, a feeling like there are actually other people that everybody is that walking around and, and talking to us is just a robot and so forth, that that's a, a state of poor health, mm -hmm. not likely to lead to a um, a uh, very pleasant life, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so belief in the supernatural should not be something that we would have negative thoughts about. That's, that's my uh, uh, contribution to... <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, if you use the word supernatural and define it in the way you defined it, yeah, I guess that's the su supernatural. Super meaning above the natural or yeah, you know, beyond it. Uh, yeah, beyond it. Um, I just tend to think that, and again, using words again, uh, but the closest word I can come to is is that um, all that is is it. it, it there isn't no bifurcation like supernatural and natural. It's just all the way it is. And and we would say, well, if you're kind of defining the way, you know, all that is, then you're probably more um, looking at um, the, the natural as opposed to what we call the supernatural. Yeah, but are you talking about what's behind the curtain, reality? Uh, no, because we can't get to that. Well, uh, but see, I think that uh, uh, I I think that you probably were talking about that. You were saying that no matter how it seems to us, uh, that actually there's uh, there is no um, uh, well, I, I forgot now what you were saying was a part of that duality, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we do tend to, and, and language helps in this um, effect of, uh, you know, we, um, we, well, I mean, like just the grammar of a simple sentence, it's subject and object, you know, uh, the uh, subject would seem to be mental and the, um, you know, the object like the baseball would seem to be quote unquote, um, you know, physical, I guess. Um, well, that but, depends on what what's in the predicate, you know. That, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Because you you know you could say, well, I believe um, that your mind exists. Well, <laughs> the, uh, well, let's see that predicate. That's not a good. Term. Uh, okay, I am having an effect on your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the mind there is a supernatural uh, concept. So, um, uh, but yeah, that, so as the book on the mind-body problem points out, a lot of the difficulty we have with this set of problems is linguistic, uh, the way we use words. And so uh, that's, I try to be as clear as I can to myself and to others. Um, to wake up. I'm awake. Uh, the, I try to be as clear as I can with my word usage. And, and that's why, for instance, uh, when we start talking about various isms and about uh, uh, foundationalism and uh, empiricism and stuff like that, I think we go off into a linguistic fog uh, for many people. And, of course, if somebody uh, wake up, Wake up, wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> uh, if, if, yeah. if somebody is uh, highly educated in that area, then those concepts are very clear. Uh, but, but
but they're not clear in the minds of people who have not trained themselves to use those words in particular ways. Right. So then when a person starts doing that, um, you know, then, then uh, other people go into a fog and they say, well, I just don't, you know, understand that uh, and so on. So they say, well, it must be right. Who am I? Uh, um, you know, uh, who am I to disagree? Because I don't know uh, what Locke said, you know, or what Hume said, and so on. So, uh, so I'm, and I'm trying to make these discussions um, something. Wake up, wake up. I'm what? Uh, trying to make uh, these these discussions uh, be relevant for people who don't have any um, quote sophisticated. Uh, uh, knowledge of um, of um, esoteric fields of knowledge, so to speak, that that the quote ordinary person would be able to understand what we're talking about with with some <laughs> difficulty, perhaps. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a little worried about um, uh, keeping you uh, on <laughs> Skype here because yeah. it really looks like you're having a, having trouble staying awake. Uh, what I would recommend, by the way, is for you to review it when I get it up. Um, okay, yeah, it might be a little incoherent in places, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, the whole, this whole area is, um, you know, fraught with, um, you know, philosophical difficulties that are very, you know, that we're not going to solve. But I just think if folks if they come to a particular worldview, whatever that is, if they would just sort of play it out and see where it, you know, where, where it um, leads. Uh, for instance, um, moral, moral relativism. That's a perfectly um, okay worldview, I guess. But where does that, you know, where does that lead one, especially in the area of, um, you know, um, um, you know, um, constructing a moral world, I guess. Um, yeah, and it has a bad yeah. name. Mor moral relativism has a bad name. And yet yes. I think that the only reasonable uh, uh, position to take with regard to ethics is one which when people hear me say, uh, oh, well, you're a moral relativist. And of course that uh, that puts me up on the shelf, you know, in, in amongst all the things that have been shown to be wrong or something, and therefore mm. don't don't need any further uh, examination. But I think it's an extremely important issue because the Humanian ultimate ethical principle is just something that uh, we say, uh, hey, uh, let's work toward a world where we have as much joy, contentment, and appreciation as possible, and as little pain, suffering, disability, and early death as possible for everyone now and in the future. Let's do that. Are you, uh, uh, you know, do you want to do that? And, uh, and uh, a person could say no. They, wake up, wake up. So, uh, so at any rate, uh, uh, and that's something that we could talk about uh, further. Um, I think also, because um, um, uh, I think it's extremely important. Um, I know that Sam Harris would say, "Well, no, there's an objective." Yes. Good and evil, you know, and, but uh, but he never explains. <laughs> it's it's you know, very that's confusing. <laughs> I mean, is it consistent with his? worldview to say that I, you know I, yeah, yeah. I, I guess he would say yes but uh, I, I have problems with that um, and yeah, folks want to construct moral universes uh, I guess a lot a lot of people do not you know aren't happy with moral relativism they want to have you know but they try to construct it from Again, some kind of scientific, um, you know, um, world worldview, and I just don't think you can get from point A to point B on that. Um, you know, um, if if awareness or you know, we're having of whatever 
is um, you know merely a um, a um, offspring offspring of um, of um, chemical reactions and stuff in the brain. Um, how do you come up with a moral universe out of that particular type of worldview? It would seem to me that um, that you, it it doesn't leave leave much room for these things for uh, these areas of value and ethics is one of those. Of course, aesthetics is another one of those. We kind of assume them again under the term axiology and philosophy, like you might study in a university or something. But um, but yeah, I mean, how do you? Uh, it goes back to the left article again, you know, the grand says who, I mean, who, I mean, um, um, well, listen, uh, if yeah. I may interrupt, um, yeah. I've just discovered that I didn't have my, uh, earplugs, uh, plugged in completely. And so, uh, these have not been working. Instead, I've been listening to my computer and that's going to screw up the sound on this uh oh <laughs> i hope i can make the sound uh, uh reasonable but uh yeah, I guess um, feedback. yeah i've probably got a lot of work to to do to yeah yeah you're gonna do some filtering yeah yeah at any rate um uh so uh, i think we've uh, you know gotten somewhere on on some yeah. of these uh issues and a little bit maybe yeah uh huh. So, um, so let's uh, let's call it a day, and uh, okay, and uh, then uh, hopefully, you know, in the next few days or coming week, we can uh, uh, take up where we left off or whatever the hot topic will be at that time. Yes, yes, we can do that. Um, probably. Uh, what's this? Is what this is. Uh, Wednesday, probably uh, um, sometime early next week, I guess. But uh -huh. we can get together on that. We'll see each other Thursday, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, very okay. good. We covered okay. a lot of material. Uh, we did. Yeah. How coherent we covered it, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, uh, this, this was, was probably, probably a bad day. Anyway. But anyway, we'll have better days for sure. <laughs> I apologize. Please, re yeah, please review it. Re review it. Okay, I will. I will. Yeah, yeah. I review every one I do. Great, great. Okay. <laughs> and and my son, you're gonna get somebody from Japan um, listening to him. Uh, my son John is um, listening to him too. Now I know he's listened to one. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, well, uh, and so if he can get humanity started over in Japan, then that's... There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, well, uh, so I will see you tomorrow. Okay. It's been great. Thanks a lot. Okay, good deal, Bill. You have a good day. You too. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Whether we can.